The fifth Cricket World Cup also known as Benson and Hedges World Cup was held in Australia and New Zealand from February 22 till March 25. Also, this is the first time a World Cup held in the Southern Hemisphere. As per the World Cup pattern it should have held in 1991. But there are various counter-arguments arises. Some said 1987 World Cup held at October-November period, so the gap is just four years and three months so it was correct and others said both Australia and New Zealand have had some issues with limited time available to get it organized as this is the first World Cup with coloured clothing and day and night format. However, at a glance it looks like Australia had the prestige to keep the World Cup champion title for five years under their belt since 1987. As always Australia was adding many colours to the game. Not like in previous seasons this time all the players were wearing coloured clothing with their names in the back. Most games played in day and night manner under floodlights. White ball invaded the Cricket World Cup pitch for the very first time. Also, some fielding restrictions introduced such as allowing only two men outside the 30 yards ring in first 15 overs and thereafter minimum four inside the ring, which laid the foundation to the birth of pinch hitters. In addition to that, the format has been changed with a complete round robin replacing the existing two qualifying groups. The initial draw was released with eight competing countries with 28 round robin matches. But in 1991 South Africa were readmitted after 21 years of exclusion due to apartheid. After including them draw was amended by adding eight more matches. Rain rule for calculating the target score for the second innings in rain affected matches has been changed as well. In the tournament reverse target has been calculated by the most productive overs method. This rule gave some problematic scenarios during the play. Especially in the semi-final match between England and South Africa. Where a difficult but eminently reachable 22 runs off 13 balls was reduced to 22 runs off 7, the least productive over, a maiden, being deducted, and finally, a preposterous 21 off one ball, the next least productive over having given one run. Just before the World Cup Sri Lanka has completed a tour in Pakistan. It was a good opportunity to get some experience to face world-class fast bowlers before playing in bouncy pitches in Australia and New Zealand. But from Sri Lanka's point of view, it was a disasters tour. Only Sanath and Hashan were able to find some runs in the test series. And it was a total chaos for former skipper Arjuna, who joined back to the side after successful domestic tournament. After poor performance in test series, he was called off hence he has not played a single limited over game in the tour. Captain Aravinda got few good starts but not being able to convert it to a big score this time. Even in one day series despite the 4-1 lost Sri Lankan batting order not being able to put enough runs on the board. Athula Samaraiskara, Hashan Thilakarathna and Vice Captain Asunka Guru Singha scored some runs but they too not that consistent. Veteran fast bowler Ramesh not among the wickets, he too called off from one day series. But comparatively Sri Lankan fast bowling department consist of Premadiya, Kapila, and Champaka did a very good job and indicates some chance in Australian bouncing pitches. Sri Lanka competes in World Cup from inaugural tournament onwards. Back in 1975 Anura Tenakun led the side and they were associate nation at that period. Despite the bravery effort against mighty Australia, even though they lost young Sri Lankan team was unable to showcase any match winning effort and they lost all three games and positioned the last place in the group. Again, Anura lead the side in 1979 and he got injured after the first match against New Zealand and vice captain Bandula called to take up the driving seat. Under his captaincy his first match was called off due to bad weather condition. But they shocked the world in the next match after beating Indian team. That is the first time ICC Associate Nation beats the full member team and with that gallant effort they complete the series sealing third position in the group. Under the captaincy of Duliab Mendes they qualified for the World Cup 1983 as a full member. In this tournament they played six matches and lost five and won a match against New Zealand in Derby. In 1987 Duliab lead the side for the second time but due to poor bowling performance in slow India and Pakistan pitches they lost all six games and positioned in the last of the group. In these World Cups Sri Lanka managed to score above 250 runs only four occasions only. Would like to remind you that first three World Cups a side has to play 60 overs and 50 overs per side World Cup starts in 1987 only. 
Despite this 4-250 plus innings Sri Lanka able to cross 200 marks only 5 times but only one occasion they were able to defend it successfully. On the other hand, other teams took the advantage of inexperienced bowling performance. West Indies mammoth score of 360 for 4 was a world record even when 1992 World Cup starts. Apart from that huge total other teams were able to score 250 plus runs in 7 times and 4 of them above the 300 marks. Tuliap Mendes, who represented Sri Lanka for 3 World Cups hold the number 1 position in the most runs list. Despite his performance only 3 other batsmen were able to cross the milestone of 250 runs. Only 3 batsmen were able to score 350s and another 3 batsmen scored 250s each. If you examine the top scorers list you will see there are no single century from a Sri Lankan batsman. Roshan Mahanama scored 89 against Pakistan in 87 and along with him only Arjuna and Roy was able to score over 75 marks. In the list 64 runs not out innings of Roy Dias in 1983 and 64 runs innings of Duliab Mendes in 1979 are match winning performances. On the other hand, 7 batsmen were able to score 100 plus runs against Sri Lanka. Vivian Richards Mammoth 181 was the best in World Cup all-time list and second best in all-time one-day international highest scoring innings. In addition to these seven centuries other batsmen were able to score half centuries in 25 times. Medium fast bowlers dominate the highest wicket-taking list. Due to his superb performance in 1983, Asantha Demel holding the top most position with 18 wickets including two five-wicket holes. Ramesh is the second and D.S. De Silva and Ravi jointly holding the third position with 10 wickets each. Due to his two five wicket holes undoubtedly Asantha seals the first two slots. Along with him four other bowlers able to grab three wickets each in an innings and nine occasions Sri Lankan bowler able to grab two wickets during his spell. Sir Richard Hadley, Vic Marks, and Abdul Qadir grabs five wicket holes against Sri Lankan batting lineup and all these three occasions happened in 1983 World Cup. Two times a West Indies paceman and English paceman took four wickets each and multiple bowlers able to grab three wickets in their spells. Gaida Alwi's mastering behind the wickets by taking five catches and one and only World Cup stump for Sri Lanka was written under the name of Brendan Kurapu. One notable instance is that the wicket keeper Ranjith Fernando was not able to contribute to a single dismissal in the inaugural tournament. Roy Dias leading the field by securing five catches including two catches in single match. Along with him Ranjun Madugala and Arjuna Ranathanga took four each in their safe hands. Sri Lanka batting partnerships are not that impressive. There are no single 100 runs stand for any wicket. Best was the 96 runs stand between Sunil Wetthamuni and Roy Dias in the historical match against India. Wicket keeper Gaida Alwis contributes with the bat in two occasions by putting 54 runs to the eighth wicket two times with the help of D.S. De Silva and Asantha Demel against Pakistan and England respectively. 182 runs for the first wicket stand put by Alan Turner and Rick McCosker were a world record. Despite that there were another four century stands for second, third, fourth, and sixth wickets. Due to the record partnership for the tenth wicket New Zealand were able to delay the Sri Lankan victory for a short period in 1983. Aravinda De Silva was elected to lead 1992 World Cup contest even though he was defeated by 4-1 in Pakistan. Asim Kagaruzing he acts as his deputy. Sri Lankan batting lineup contains experienced Arjuna Ranatunga, Roshan Mahanama and Athula Samara Sakara, this is Arjuna's third World Cup. Even though he failed with the bat in Pakistan, Chandika Hathura Singh he had two fine tours in England and New Zealand, which gave some high hopes. Also World Cup debutant, all-rounder young Sanath Jayasuriya and wicket-keeper Hashan Tilkaratni in fine form after the Pakistan tour. Sri Lankan bowling department lead by experienced fast bowler Ramesh Ratnayak. Opening bowler Champaka Ramanayak and Kapila Award and already secure their places and young pace man Pramadi Awikramasinghe he gave some indications in Pakistan to give Sri Lanka some hope in bouncy Australia pitches. Along with them Don Anuraziri and Ruwan Kalpage joined from spin department. And Graham Labrui joined the squad in last moment. Ranjit Madurazinghe, Marvan Atapatu, and wicket keeper Ashley De Silva was dropped from the Sri Lanka squad who played in Pakistan and Arjuna Ranatunga and Ramesh Ratnayak called to one day side again. Unfortunately, Ramesh got injured just before tournament begins and he had to step down from the tour. So, another Sri Lankan pace man Graham Labrui joined the 14 man Sri Lankan World Cup squad to strengthen Sri Lankan bowling department. 
Arjuna Ranathanga was the most experienced player in Sri Lanka squad and he played in 1983 and 1987 World Cups before this with three World Cup 50s. Even though he missed to play a single match Ramesh had some quality time in 1983 and 1987 World Cups with Arjuna. Skipper Aravinda starts his World Cup carrier in 1987. But there were no big scores in front of his name yet. Asanka was able to build few good partnerships with his team members but his highest score was 37 so far. With his 89 Roshan Mahanama joined to Sri Lanka in a World Cup for the second time as an opening batsman. Athula represents Sri Lanka as an all-rounder in 1983 but he misses the 1987 tournament. This time he joined the side as a dashing opener to take advantage or first 15 over rule to grab some quick runs. Even tough it is just 4 wickets Don Anuraziri joined the side as the most experienced spin bowler. From Sri Lanka point of view, they have another gentleman as well waiting to walk into the field. He is Duland Buolt Jens and he is the official Sri Lankan umpire for this tournament. He was 59 when this starts. He was born in Mulaiti Vua, August 23, 1933 and in his youth, he represents Kaluthara Town Club and Saracens. In 1992 World Cup he stood as an umpire for six matches and he stepped down from umpiring after this World Cup and later, back in April 25, 2004 he died. This whole tournament was organised in round-robin manner in both Australian and New Zealand pitches for every team. So, for Sri Lanka, they have one warm-up game and eight group matches, out of that three was arranged to play in New Zealand and remaining six in Australia. The warm-up game of Sri Lanka held North Sydney Oval against Pakistan on February 17. After that they fly to New Zealand to start their first group match against Zimbabwe in New Plymouth on February 23. And this is the third match of the tournament. Next match they meet host New Zealand at Hamilton on February 25th. After that match they fly back to Queensland Australia to meet India at Mackay, February 28th as their third match of the compilation. Again, they fly back to Wellington to meet South Arica for the first time in World Cup. That match was held in March 2nd as the 14th match of the competition. All remaining group level matches for Sri Lanka lined up in Australian soil. They met hosting nation Australia on March 7th at Adelaide. Then they took the challenge of mighty England at Ballarat on March 9. After that West Indies at Barrie on March 13. Sri Lanka's last group match was held on March 15 at Perth against Pakistan as the 33rd match of the tournament. Sri Lanka starts the tour after playing a warm-up match with Pakistan. The match was held in North Sydney Oval on February 17, 1992. Before this warm-up match Sri Lanka has played the fifth and final one-day match against Pakistan and they made three changes from their lineup. Middle order batsman Marvan Atapatu and off-break bowler Ranjith Madurazing he ruled out from the squad and they were replaced by Arjuna Ranathanga and Don Anuraziri. Ramesh Ruthnayake took the place of opening bowler position from Kapila Wajgunawarden. From Pakistan end skipper Imran Khan was rested and Salim Malik lead the side. Iqbal Sikander came to strengthen Pakistan fast bowling department, to fill the gap of Walker Yunus. Sri Lanka batted first and they were bowled out for 210 in 49.5 overs. None of them able to score a half century. Top scorer was Sri Lankan skipper Aravinda Da Silva, who scored 48 runs in 64 deliveries including 7 boundaries. Vice Captain Asunka Gurusinga scored 47 with two boundaries and one massive 6 in 91 balls and built 100 runs partnership of Inda for the third wicket. Arjuna joined the side after some time but out cheaply which leaves a question of his selection to the team. Wasim Akram took four wickets for 39 runs. Pakistan made disasters start. They lost three early wickets for just 30 runs on the board. Champakaramanayak took a promising start with the ball and grabbed all three wickets in his first spell. At this point acting captain Salim Malik joined Mayandad and put 141 runs solid partnership for the fourth wicket. Malik scored 64 off 83 balls in 136 minutes with four boundaries before Ramana Yake took him as his fourth victim. After Malik departs Pakistan starts to collapse. Ramana Yake keeps continue damaging Pakistan team and he ended up with magnificent spell of seven wickets for 41 runs in his 9.2 overs. Javed Mayandad scored 80 runs fighting alone and finally got himself run out. Before the tournament begins ICC announce warm-up matches were not categorized as full one-day matches. So, these statistics were not entered to players' records.